Hello and welcome to the WIHS Journal, Public Affairs from 104.9 FM. I'm Paul Kretschmer. This is the second of two days of conversation with Susan McGann, speaking on behalf of the support organization for patients and family and friends of those with Huntington's disease. As we rejoin our conversation, we now talk about some of the things that people are doing to support those with the, uh, with the disease. You know, say people, they have to stay home, right? right? And some people, maybe they used to go and have their nails done or their hair cut, <laughs> and they can't do that now. So maybe they can afford to give us 5 or $10 right. or whatever. They could, they could divert it from something they would be doing otherwise to something else, which is actually a good cause and gives them the opportunity to exactly. a- actually participate in a, in a meaningful way for other people who are members of their community at the same time. Exactly. And and um, what I've been doing, I've been making masks um, for people, friends and family. And when they say, well, can I pay you? I said, no, just donate to our, you know, our team if you can. So I've been doing that. In fact, our, our, uh, our doggy daycare, I gave them little doggy masks last week and, <laughs> and they donated. Um, so I think, you know, we're, we're giving, you know, people are giving to each other. So, um, and that's how we support our, I think I said before, in order for us to accomplish our mission, because we are volunteer-driven and grassroots, even before this COVID-19, we've always depend upon the kindness and the support of our communities. Um, and, you know, that still will c- come about now. So, so basically what, what the virtual Team Hope Walk is, is people will... Um, the day of the walk is the 17th, which is, that's what the date we had planned on having it at Chatfield Hollow, but of course we can't do that. So it, people can, any time during the day, what they do is they'll go onto our Facebook page. So it's all, it's a social media type thing. Mm-hmm. They'll go up and they'll, they'll upload whatever they've done in their safe home or in their backyard or in their neighborhood and either put a picture or put a little video of them walking um, to raise awareness and, and for, for, for Huntington's. And also May is Huntington's Awareness Month, so we've always had our walk during May. It starts off, um, the kickoff is, I guess, this Saturday. National is having a um, Team Hope Walk um, nationally um, to kick off Awareness Month. But um, you know the whole thing is is we're still we're still um, providing our support services for our families. We're still doing. We have a we have a chapter social worker. Um, we have the three support groups that are still going on. Um, we still have events that um, that we need help supporting in order to support our community. <laughs> so um, so we still need. The support from our, I know I keep saying support, I'm sorry. No, that, okay. that, 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 that's, it, that, that's exactly right, because support indicates coming together and holding and lifting each other up. Exactly, that's exactly it, I love that. Um, and so, so basically, so together, so basically walking together, seeing people walking, um, you know, we can't do this alone. We're all walking together yep. and supporting our mission of improving the lives of everyone affected by Huntington's and their families. Um, and you doing this is helping support us. I, I, have, mean, a, it, I have a question for you. Sure. Uh, as far as the support groups are concerned, the, the three that you mentioned, mm-hmm. do people who've been diagnosed with it, is it for them only, or is it also for we fam- have, family like, members? It, we, in fact, I'm glad you said that, because we have a, um, they're for everyone. They're not just for caregivers, they're for everybody. Um, but we, we are starting an, a, a support group um, just for um, people that have been diagnosed, that have actually are HD positive. Huntington disease positive. And we have a young woman who lives in Danielson um, who's living with the disease. And she, um, she's wonderful. She, she is supporting people online for a Facebook group, and she's going through the, the process of training so she can, she can provide this support 
for the people that are living each day with the disease. Um, but the other groups are open to anyone, um, so for medical personnel that want to learn. Um, it's all confidential also, of yes. course. Yes, yes. Um, but basically caregivers and people affected, anyone that wants to attend. It sounds like, as you referred to earlier, it seems like a disease that can strike anyone at about any time. I suppose there are percentages worked out for that sort of thing, but as you indicated earlier, there, it's been discovered that there's a form of it for, uh, within the juvenile population, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then people who are somewhat older, maybe in the middle of their adult years, as well as individuals such as your husband who was diagnosed mm-hmm. l- even later than that. Well, Paul, the, the thing is, because it's a, a genetic disease, it actually, you're born with it. Yeah. So, it, it's, yeah. It, it's, yeah. The, it's there latent from the time you're born, I presume. It, yeah, it, like that's the whole, whole thing. You don't, you know, because we're a rare disease and we don't get enough um, funding to, you know, we, we want to find the cure. So sure. that's where the focus is. So there are other um, trials or, or research that could be done to, to find out why certain people... So basically, it's a um, defective repeat of a gene. Mm. We both... Um, so you, you inherit... Um, you have two genes. Everyone has these two genes, CAG genes. So you inherit one from your mom and one from your dad. And so... With a uh, person with Huntington's, they have a good gene and a bad gene. So say one parent has two good genes, one parent has a good and a bad. So that's why they call it the 50-50 chance. Oh. So, and it depends on the irregular repeat of the gene. So if there is, like my husband's irregular repeat is 41, they say that 40 and up, you definitely will get the disease. But you don't know when or which symptoms you're going to get. See, that's the thing. You can have someone who has, you could have 100 people, each have 41 repeats, and there are some people that get it in their 20s, some people get it in their 60s, and we still don't know why, what other variables that are affecting it. Um, of course, like with any diseases, if you know, if you get tested and you're pre-symptomatic, which my husband did get tested, and he, this is before he had symptoms, um, there, there are ways that, that you can help delay the age of onset, like with anything else, you get healthy exercise, healthy eating, mm-hmm. um, you know, meditation, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but there's still, uh, still a lot that can be researched to find out other things. And for listeners who have been listening to our conversation and would like to know those other things, then where do you point them as a contact point for further information, both about the national organization as well as the chapter, now chapter here in Connecticut? I would go to the the national organization is www.hdsa.org. And the national organization has links to our chapter. It has links to a lot of information. Um, there's, e- there's, there's online um, support groups. There's advocacy. There's so many things. Um, and we just are so thankful of, for your listeners. If they could just, you know, help, help one thing, even volunteer at some, at some point. Once, once this is all over... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and we could because we we have something in September, we have something in November, um, and you know, just just um, one little thing helps. Thank you very much for your time, Susan began. I thank, very appreciative that you were ready to come on the air and talk about this with me. Well, Paul, I appreciate you very much. My thanks to Susan again, who agreed to talk with me on air for this edition and yesterday's on the WIHS Journal about Huntington's disease. For further information, call us at 860-346-1049. The opinions expressed are those of the participants, not necessarily those of the staff or management of this station. I'm Paul Kretschmer on the WIHS Journal, Public Affairs from WIHS, Middletown.